Hi, I'm Randy Osborne, the owner of Fine Fretted String Instruments. Began my shop in 1987. I've always had a great interest in history, and I just released this book after 15 plus 17 years of working on it. The annotations of the history of the classical guitar in Argentina, 1822 to 2000. My co-author in Buenos Aires, Hector Garcia Martinez, is the type of guy when a famous guitarist would pass away, the newspapers would call him and say, hey, so-and-so just passed away. Do you uh, have a biography you can send us of this artist? And he would say, yeah, I'll finish it up. And so Hector's been a researcher for 45 years like that. He had studied in the 1960s with Adolfo Luna, who's covered in my book, our book. And uh, in the six years that Hector studied with Adolfo, Adolfo never said, oh, I recorded for Discos Nacional Odeon in the 1920s. So we have ads in the Carlos y Caretas uh, weekly uh, magazine showing the uh, listing from 1929. Adolfo Luna owned one of the uh, guitars of Blanc and Targa. I think it was Enrique Garcia. So the book has four volumes, weighs about 21 pounds, has 175 biographies. I translate mostly Spanish, but I also translate French, Italian, Portuguese, Catalan dialect of Barcelona and Japanese as well about 3,200 plus images and photos in the four volumes. This is volume one. Got just, uh, here's some Marble Flurry sheet music covers, 78 RPM record label, things like that, besides photos of the artists. Here's a diploma from the Academia de Guitarra Pratt. Domingo Pratt brought the Tauriga School to Argentina. He arrived on the 1st of January, 1908. Met Antonio Sinopoli about three weeks later, corroborated by signed, dated sheet music covers amongst these people. I think we have about 65 pages on Augustine Barrios in the book. Probably just as many pages on Miguel Yobe as well, Targa student, who was recording in 1925. There's a Barrios concert program from the Teatro Solis, 1925. So many of these types of things I acquired, I had ended up buying archives from 12 different great guitarists who were on the scene in Buenos Aires in the Rio de la Plata, Montevideo area. Volume two starts with the women of the guitar in Argentina, page one, Lolita Almarone. When she was 16, in her ninth year as a guitarist, she was quite a child prodigy. She had ended up going to Barcelona, played the same theaters that Emilio Pujol, Andre Segovia, Regino Sainz de la Maza, played have the first programs of Blanca Pratt. Domingo's daughter. Here she's playing a Simplicio her dad bought for her. She passed away a few years ago. We have an interview with her. In the last hundred pages, there are interviews of a half a dozen 
the great artist Atawapi Apanki from a radio show that Hector did in 1981. So the women of the guitar. Price is several hundred pages. Have concert programs, photos from magazines. An interesting aspect uh, guitarist Graciela Pomponio in her biographies written later in life, she left out the fact that she was a student of Celia Salomon de Font. So there's a lot of info in this book not just about her, but many other artists on the internet you can read doctoral dissertations of Emilio Pujol. There is information in my book that is not contained in those doctoral dissertations due to the archives that I spent a fortune on. Began buying archives in 1999. Volume 3 Talk about the amateurs and the professionals of the guitar. Here we have uh, Maria and Helica Funes, along with Cecilia Rodriguez. He's a type of guy that did a lot of work on behalf of the guitar societies, which we go into depth. I have the magazine covers, uh, slices of history from those guitar magazines. First Guitar Society began summer of, uh, or winter, as we would call it. Summer up here, winter down there. 1934. We have uh, Consuelo Maya Lopez concert. She uh, was a Domingo Pratt student. Here she did in 1934, she did a complete Bach concert. Pretty much unheard of at the time. We also find the Testori sisters, Magdalena and Victoria. They are shown in uh, Carzi Coretta's magazine circa 1904 when they were kids, child prodigies, and playing at uh, rich people's homes for dinners and lunches and so forth. We find that by 1924-25, the photos in the Revista Musicale Illustrada Tarega magazine uh, shows them that they were early professors. Today we have 5,000 universities around the world that have uh, guitar programs. But back then there were, there were violin and piano courses in colleges and universities, but not guitar until the 1920s. We really take this stuff for granted nowadays. Volume 4 covers Uruguay, Uruguay. Ricardo Munoz, I have two archives that I got from him, one from a son and one from a grandson. And he published Historia de la Guitarra, hardbound, 412 pages, I believe, in 1930. That particular book was printed in the uh, National Penitentiary by uh, prisoners who had committed offenses and worked in the printing department of that particular prison. So I cover Uruguay, Rico Stover, my colleague who passed away a year ago, February, February of 2019. He was really an editor of the book and I, he saw the initial version about 2002 that was 250 pages, something like that. And he would say things like, what do you want to be known for? What you think or what you know? He said, write what you know. Now, without that advice, I might have added a lot of tidbits that were totally unnecessary due to my amount of knowledge at a certain time as opposed to just looking at the historical facts 
drawn from 26 foot thick of archives that I have. In the uh, section on Uruguay, we have um, sections on Julio Martinez Oyanga, and he played at the White House when FDR was president, 1936. We also have the archive of Pedro Mascari Rysik. He was the first president of the uh, Asociación Guitaristica Uruguayo, the first Uruguayan uh, guitar society. And the last archive we got is pretty interesting. I acquired this uh, about 2016, I guess. And uh, Rosendo Barrero was a student of Emilio Pujol, Andres Segovia, and was also a colleague of Augustine Barrios. We have two newspaper interviews of Augustine Barrios where he raves about the ability of Rosendo Barrero. Not very well known at all. He was covered by a paragraph in uh, Domingo Pratt's Dicenado de Guitaristas y Guitareros, published 1934, and uh, also in the writings of Ricardo Munoz. A lot of the uh, text is taken from these great writers, historians of the guitar, that were publishing in the 20s and 30s. Ricardo Munoz passed away in 1967, and about 2012, I acquired seven unpublished books. He is credited with every source. He had a book called the Historia Universal de la Guitarra. And so seven volumes that were never published. And as I derive information and photos as well, he's given credit on every page of my book. So that's kind of a synopsis of what this is. This weighs 21 pounds shipped. It's about $62 or more to be shipped to Europe. It's about $30 in the United States to have it shipped uh, outside of the Bay Area. I'm uh, doing this video in Campbell, California, where my store is located at 2345 Winchester Boulevard, Suite B, Campbell, California, 95008. Store phone number is 408-879-9930. I'm here to sell violins, guitars, cellos, stand-up basses, mandolins, bandorias, you name it. Anything that has been played by world-class people in the past is still available in my store. I'm here 9 to 5.30 Monday through Saturday. Thank you, folks.